Hey, what's up everybody? Paul Lasky here, Ableton Certified Trainer for Sonic Academy. And I wanted to take a look at Ableton Live 12.3's new features today. Ableton Live 12.3 has officially been released with a whole bunch of new features. It's been in beta for the last few months and I've been playing around with some of those features. We did an earlier video on it uh, when the beta was first announced. And um, I wanna take a look at some of these new things and perhaps work on a little bit of a remix here. So I've taken one of my favorite 80s songs, which is Shout by Tear for Fears. All credit goes to Tears for Fears. I do not own the, the copyright to this song. I just wanted to have a little bit of fun with it and maybe do a little bit of a remix. Uh, but one of the big new features, of course, is the stem separation. So if we take a loop that has multiple instruments in it or a full song like I have here, we can bring it in as an audio clip to Ableton Live and simply right click on it. And from down here, we can see separate stems to new audio tracks. Uh, we have an option to separate the stems as either in either high speed mode or a high quality mode. High quality will do a few extra passes to try to remove as many artifacts as possible. It's still a little shaky, it's still a little bit hit or miss as any AI stem separation kind of goes, um, but it does a pretty decent job with it. And as you can see, um, it'll separate into four separate stems. We have vocals, drums, bass, and then others, which is basically just everything besides those three elements there. Because it can take a little bit of while, to, a little while to kind of run through and do the separation, I've already done it once in high quality mode, and this is the result here. Well, first I'll play a little bit of the original song. Classic. Okay, and then we'll play that same segment of the song just as the stems sort of group together and playing together. And altogether, it sounds pretty decent if we kind of go through and solo the stems. Here are the vocals. Decent, you can hear some of the artifacts there, the bleed through from other stems, but it, overall it's not bad, it's totally workable. Here are the drums. Drums, it did a pretty good job isolating those. Those sound pretty clean. Bass, bass sounds pretty decent too. And then here's everything else. The other stems, some of those synths and backing elements. So there's definitely some good usable stuff in here. So what I'm thinking of doing is uh, taking these stems, I'll just, I'll do a quick remix in five minutes and then I'll come back to you and we'll check out some of the other features in the context of a remix. A few moments later. All right, well that was a pretty intense five minutes, but I think I came up with a pretty solid remix using some of those stems. So I'll play a little bit of it here. Let's skip ahead. Um, so obviously using, using quite a bit of the vocals, I've cut them up a bit in a, Simpler here, I've got the full vocals over here. Using some little bits of the uh, percussion stem. That triangle hit there and stuff like that. So I found some fun little bits from the stems to uh, work in and, and turn into a remix here. Um, let's look at some of the additional new features in Live 12.3 that I could use to maybe enhance some parts of this remix. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the a couple of the new ways that we can bounce audio, which are really, really convenient. So. One thing that we can do is bounce all of the tracks together in a group into one new audio track very, very quickly. So I find this to be really great for like the end of a section if you wanna do like a reverse of the drums or something like that, which, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So let's play just a little bit of this. So I've got this drums bus here with all these different drum loops grouped together. And I'm just gonna select time across the group track. Notice how it highlights all of the tracks within the group, all the clips on those tracks. And I can simply right click and select bounce group track to new track or bounce group in place. Now, if I do bounce group to new track, it will deactivate all these clips, but keep them in place, create a new audio track, and then just bring my new audio file, my bounced audio file onto the new audio track. If I do bounce group in place, it will remove this entire group, put a new audio track in place, and then put that new bounced audio there. I wanna keep these intact. So I'm gonna hit bounce group to new track. And there's our new track. Let's just make sure it sounds pretty much the same as it should. And we'll just take this and reverse it. So I'm gonna click on this clip, let's zoom in a little bit. If I click on the clip and I simply press the R key, it'll reverse it. Let's take a listen to that in context. Nice, that was actually two bars, but it's all good. I wanted to just do one bar. Um, not a problem. The other thing we can do is bounce, or we can copy audio or MIDI from anywhere, just a selection of time on the arrangement, and then paste it as a new bounced audio file, which is really awesome. So what I have here is one hit of the vocal, just the word in, and I'm gonna put a massive reverb on that. 
And what I'm gonna do is just select time from the beginning of that lyric to about this point here. Notice I've deactivated this segment of the clip. So I'm selecting all this time and I'm gonna just copy this so I can right click and select copy or hit command or control C. Then I'm gonna make a new audio track and we'll call this uh, Vox Reverse or whatever. And then I can paste it down here. So if I just click down here and press, or I can right click and then I can select paste bounced audio or I can use the hotkey option command V or option or alt control V. And I can paste bounced audio. It's gonna give me that audio as bounced audio. It's split it into two clips. It's got like the initial hit and then the reverb tail. I'm just gonna expand it out so it's just one full clip maybe from like here to here-ish, we'll get rid of that. And then I can reverse this again too. So let's click on it, press the R key. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the reverb off on my main vocal track, and then we'll kind of line this up so we get a nice little vocal swell. I might turn the clip gain up a little bit here. Let's see how this sounds. So unsolo that. Oh, and let's expand this clip back out so that we got that full lyric or the full set of lyrics back in place there. And let's take a quick listen. Nice. So quick little reverb vocal reverse there with the paste bounced audio function. Really, really convenient. The other cool thing is splice integration, which I've talked a little bit about before. Um, but if you have a splice account, even if you're not paying monthly for a splice subscription, you can create a free splice account and Splice will integrate right into the browser in Ableton Live 12.3. Now, again, if you don't have a Splice account, you might be thinking, well, how is this gonna be useful for me? Well, the cool thing is that Ableton and Splice have collaborated and provided a whole bunch of free samples to anyone who creates a Splice account. So I'm gonna use one of the free samples that's provided. You can find them all if you just search in the Splice portion of the browser here. So you can go to your homepage here, um, we can go to library and that's where we, we will be able to find the samples that are provided by Ableton and Splice. And I'm thinking I might wanna add like some kind of ARP, like arpeggiated synth or something. So let's just go to search library, let's type ARP. And I'm in the key of C minor here. So let's see what we can come up with. I could get a little bit deeper into my search. I could, you know, search specifically for BPM ranges or for a specific key, but let's just see what we got here. That actually sounds really nice. That's in G minor, and I think that might fit with my C minor here. Let's. Oh, I do have an ARP in the track already, but maybe another ARP will add some flavor here. The other cool thing is if I'm playing my arrangement and then I hit play on a loop in the Splice browser, it'll sync to tempo. Yeah, and that actually sounds great. So let's create a new, um, new uh, audio track here. I've got an ARP here. Let's make a new audio track. We'll call it ARP2. And we'll drag and drop it right in, throw it here, maybe expand the loop out so it plays for that full section. And I could probably turn it down a little bit too. It's probably a little bit loud. Let's hear how it sounds with everything. Turn it down a little bit, maybe send it through my reverb on my return track. Yeah, but that slots nicely into the track. It's literally the first ARP that I found. Very cool. We've got a little filtering going on too. Awesome. Uh, the next thing too is the updates to the auto pan effect. It's now called auto pan tremolo and it's got a few new bells and whistles. I've been saying for years that auto pan is the greatest audio effect in Ableton Live and I will die on that hill, um, but they just made it even better. So I'm gonna go down here to my strings track solo that. It's a nice sound. Love that synth sound, but it's a little static. So I'm going to use the auto pan tremolo effect found in the audio effects folder here to add a bit of movement to that. So by default, it'll just, you know, pan the signal for us. We can uh, adjust the intensity or the amount of the panning, the speed of it. We can sync it to tempo by changing. We have different synced values here. We can do dotted and triplet, or we can just do standard sync rates. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of panning, maybe like a half bar. Let's loop this portion of my arrangement. And I might dial it back a little. We'll just get a little subtle panning there. Let's add another instance of this. We can now use the tremolo tab over here. This is just going to give us pure volume modulation. Um, we can use shape to adjust the shape of the waveform here, um, kind of skew it in different ways. We can invert the phase. I think I'm going to do like a side chain compression ducking sort of thing here. So we'll sync the rate to quarter notes, there it is, and increase that a little bit. 
So we got that panning going on. Maybe we'll speed the panning up a little bit. And then we got this nice ducking effect. Let's hear how that sounds. With the kick and everything else, awesome. You can turn the volume up a bit. Amazing, yeah, I love the updates they did to this. This my favorite effect, they made it even better. So, yeah, that's a handful of the new features. Those are my, my top ones, my favorite ones that I've been using a lot. Um, but yeah, Ableton Live 12.3, it is officially released now. So if you own Ableton Live 12, you can go ahead and do the update and get access to all these great new features. I will see you again soon on another Sonic Academy video. Until then, happy producing everybody. Take care.